Today, more than ever before, the focus is on the user. This is why the aspects related to the user interface, commonly referred to as UI, and the user experience, known as UX, become so relevant. In this module, we'll study these aspects, starting with design systems, and then we'll see the specific design guides for each platform. A design system consists of achieving through the use of a set of principles, patterns, and organized practices the design of applications so that they maintain a uniform style and look, thus achieving the purpose of the digital product. The design system will then establish how our software should interact with users and how it should behave, what the controls are supposed to look like, which fonts, colors, and icons to use in each case, which design patterns we will use and which will be reusable, but in addition, it'll establish what the workflow for the development and design of all these components will be like, and how they will be shared within the development team and the rest of the organization. Similarly to a software development process, we can see the development of the design system as an evolutionary process. This process begins with the definition of the purpose, which is ultimately the digital product for which we need it. It continues with the definition of the audience, the goals and design values we want to achieve. We'll continue with the definition of the patterns. This will be one of the central tasks of the process. In it, we will define the semantics of the design, which components our design will contain and how they will be reused. Next, we'll define the theme, the images and icons, the fonts and the components that we have detected. And finally, we'll establish how to share the design and documentation with the team so that everyone can implement the design system in the application development. The process will be repeated throughout the life cycle of the product, just like it happens with the system's functionality because they continuously evolve. And just like the concept of DevOps, developer operations, when talking about a design system, we talk about design ops, which means integrating designers within the DevOps chain so that they're a part of it and work side by side with the developers so that the results are really what they propose. What we see here are tools, the main ones, that designers use just to do their work and to carry out all the design and on which we are working to have them integrated into Genexus. In Genexus for smart devices, the design system is made up by a series of elements such as the design guides for each platform, the theme and images, and the stencils. All of these are an important part of that UI and UX modeling that we must have in our applications. Next, we will talk about the specific design guides for each platform. We'll leave themes and stencils for later. We've already mentioned that one of the reasons why we need applications to be native is for them to keep the look and feel of all the other apps on the user's device. Each platform will define design guidelines for its applications, both UI and UX. Android 5 provides the guides known as Material Design, and for iOS, we have those published on the Apple site, which do not have a special name. The different design guides for the different versions of iOS can be found on the Apple site. The fundamental change came with the release of iOS 7. One of the particularities of their design guides has to do with the minimalist use of colors and screen information. Therefore, we'll find for example that an application on an iPad is going to be much more minimalist in the use of colors than an Android application because the iOS guides recommend that we use neutral tones for backgrounds and bright colors for actions, for buttons and actions. For example, one of the proposals in the guide is that only 10% or 20% of our designs should have colors so that they don't compete with the colors of the content we want to show. It's also recommended, for example, that we use colors that go well against white or black backgrounds. On the other hand, it's recommended to always use a single color, preferably that of the brand, for all actions that are offered to the user. And for example, here we can see that orange is the color of the brand, and that the same color should not be used for other things to avoid confusing the user. So whenever that color appears, they know it'll be an element on which you can execute an action. 
we'll see that this color can be defined in Genexus as action tint color in the theme in the properties of the application class. We will also find the recommendation to use the general icons shown here only, and always for those actions, so as to not confuse the user. So for example, we know that the action icon in any iOS application will correspond to opening an action menu, and whenever it appears, the user will expect to display actions by tapping on it. In the bar tab, which is used to provide the main navigation between screens, it's recommended to use few icons and add text to the icons discreetly when they're not universal. Otherwise, the user has no way of knowing what they're about. But on the other hand, if there are icons that are not active, it is suggested that they are more discreet with an outline and without filling, so that they just receive less attention, and therefore two versions of each item should be provided, for when it's active and when it's not. We can also see that even the sizes of the controls are established in the guidelines. All app icons should be the same in terms of size, level of detail, and border. On the other hand, iOS uses a coordinate system to place content on the screen. This system is measured in points that are equivalent to a certain number of pixels. In a standard resolution screen, one point, one seventy-second inch, is equivalent to one pixel. High resolution displays have a higher pixel density. Since there are more pixels in the same physical space, there are more pixels per point. As a result, these screens require images with more pixels. For example, if we start from an image in standard resolution at 1x of 10 by 10 pixels, the at 2x version of this image should be 20 by 20 pixels. And for the at 3x version, it should be 30 by 30 pixels. For this reason, when developing our app, we must provide images in all resolutions, because the images to be used depend on the device in which the application is installed. In these guides, you will also find the scale factor used by each device. For example, iPhone 4 to 6 uses an at 2x factor, and iPhone 7 Plus uses an at 3x factor. The app icon is used for application branding. For example, it appears in the App Store, in the home screen of the device, in Spotlight, in other words the search results screen, and in the settings screen as well. It's therefore vital to include these icons in the different resolutions, so that, depending on the device, the one corresponding to its resolution and type of device is used. For example, if it's a phone or tablet, it'll be different. Note that the sizes are predetermined. The icon is designed with a square shape, and rounded edges will automatically appear on the device. Here we see, for example, for an iPad, the image that'll be used as the event day app icon in the store and on the home page of the device, 76 points. And we see the image as it'll appear in the search window, spotlight, 40 points, and the image that will be used in the settings window, 29 points. When we design the application, we have to provide the same image, but with different sizes and resolutions, and all this must be entered into the application to use the corresponding one. We will need the same thing for the start images of the application. In this case, we will also need landscape and portrait versions in all resolutions. These guides also include screen design according to the device orientation. Here we have in the portrait orientation an application that's a calendar, and we also have on the same screen shown in landscape mode, and we see that they are different, just to adapt to the size we have. This was a brief review of the iOS guides, and now we'll look at the material design guides. Version 5 of the Android platform incorporated the design guides known as material design to create a particular ecosystem. This will allow developers to customize the look and feel of their applications, making them more user-friendly with an optimized user experience. As we will see, these functionalities will be offered by Genexus in two ways, through customizable properties, and also some that will be provided by default. Here we show a sales application developed with Genexus, which follows the guidelines of material design, where uniformity in the use of colors for certain common elements becomes fundamental. For example, when editing fields, we can see that all fields that are not being edited at that time are underlined with a uniform color. That color will be known as the regular color. 
Then when the field is being edited, it'll appear in another color. That color is the activated color. On the other hand, when the user taps on a button or an action, it'll appear highlighted with a specific color that we will indicate in due course. The action bar is one of the most important elements of any application. Its color becomes the primary color of the application, which distinguishes the brand. The material design guides indicate the color that the status bar must take. That is to say, the bar at the top, the one that contains the time, battery indicators, Wi-Fi, notifications, and so on, must have a darker color than the primary color, and it'll be known as primary color dark. In addition, the color of the icons embedded in the application bar must also match the color of the application bar to be coherent throughout the application. This will be known as action tint color. Also, throughout the application, one color is used for the controls activated by the user. For example, to tap on a button or text to confirm in a modal screen, radio buttons, and so on. This color is known as accent color. All these colors are set in the application class of the theme. On the other hand, we see that the status bar could be hidden under certain conditions. For example, when the user slides up the screen to see what's below, then we can, for example, make it disappear. We can also configure a shadow under the control to highlight it, indicating the user that the control can be selected. The property that allows setting this elevation effect is called elevation. The strip tab. Tabs are shown with an image and background color, an indicator of the active tab with a color indicator and some elevation. Touch ripples. This is used to visually notify the user that the tap he has made has had an effect. When the end user taps on a control that has an associated event, a highlighted circle expands from the point where the tap was made to the edges of the control, filling it in completely, showing that the event is being triggered. This is automatically solved by Genexus. We don't have to do anything. Task color. Android devices provide three physical, capacitive buttons, each one for a particular action. In addition to the back and home buttons, we have the button that shows with a tab switcher a cascade of thumbnail images with the apps recently closed by the user in order to return to them. These thumbnails show their application bar, icons, and label. The slide menu. When the navigation style is slide, that is, when the main menu is displayed as a window from the left, its size has to follow the guidelines, and leave a shadow on the right section when it's displayed. Also, if it has a hero image, in other words, the image that appears at the top taking the entire width, note that the menu window must reach the status bar, keeping its opacity. Some of these properties will also be automatically provided by Genexus. As we saw for iOS, for Android, it's also necessary to provide different options for the same image according to the density. Here we see, for example, the images for the event day application icon. We'll have the same image in low density LDPI, medium density MDPI, high density HDPI, and extra high density XHDPI, and so on. Our applications must follow these guidelines. Android apps must follow the material design guides, and iOS apps must follow the guides we mentioned at the beginning. So how do we configure all these general properties, that is, those that apply to the entire app? And how do we configure the general design sent to us by the graphic designer? In smart device applications, the theme object will be essential, and we'll talk about it in the next video.